So here's some of the pictures that you got to see me take in my photo studio downstairs in the shop. And we have some on leather backgrounds, brown and black. We have some on white backgrounds, but this is the basis for creating photos for your images. Welcome to Brick by Brick, a step-by-step -step YouTube series that documents the building of a company from start to finish. Hey, there, yeah. This is a Adobe Lightroom, and so I have all these photos loaded up, and now I'm going through the photos and getting rid of the ones that I don't wanna edit and the ones I don't like. In Lightroom, if you press the number keys, you can assign ratings to each of your pictures so they're easier to find later. Okay, so cool, we pretty much have them all set up. So now we're gonna go all the way back to the white background, something like this, and we're gonna do a little bit of color grading. Not a lot, we're just gonna make sure the exposure is good. Uh, the lighting's good, you can see the details, etc. There's no wrong or right way to do this. Just play with the sliders until you find something that looks good. And so that's pretty much it. So if you look before, after. You see the difference in clarity and the way they pop. You can see it fixes fixed the little lens correction there. But this is how the colors are supposed to look and this is the attention we want to grab. And so we're going to go away with that. We're going to copy the settings and then we're going to come over here and we're gonna paste the settings. See how it popped? Boom. That's what we're gonna do for all of them. But now that we're getting into the darker ones on the leather, I wanna play with it just a little bit more and see if we can't get um, some of the exposure down a little bit to make it look a little less washed out. So if we look at the original versus the new, you can see how important color grading um, really is because it gets you a good base layer. We'll be able to zoom in on these images and make some cool like stylized ones. So now we have um, all of our edited photos. Now we need to bring them into Photoshop, clean them up and um, make them squares. And then we can start to erase the backgrounds and do stuff like that. So here's all our color corrected photos. What we want to do is we're going to upload all the white background ones um, into canva the reason we're using canva to remove the backgrounds is their ai is just so good we're going to click on this we're going to go to edit image we're going to go to background remover we're going to let it do its thing boop look at that background's done apply I'm telling you man it's a powerful tool. So we're going to go through and we're going to do this for um, every single one of these photos so that we can have some usable photos for Amazon and for our website. Because that I mean, that's a, it's important. You have to have a background, uh, a white background item. OK, so these became these. What do you guys think? Looks pretty good, huh? The quality of these images is superior to the quality of these images. Look at that. That looks freaking great. I love it. Alrighty, now we're gonna do some Photoshop image editing. So let me show you what we got going on here. I start by dragging things over into Photoshop and then I just grab the spot healing brush. I right click on the areas I wanna copy and then I left click on the areas that I wanna heal and it gets rid of all those little specks of dust and all those blemishes to make things look super clean. Look at that. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, that's a good one. All right, we did it. I'd say that's a success. That's enough images right there to build a website. Let's move on. So what we've done is we've taken a bunch of photos and we've edited them down, but they're way too big. The file sizes are just huge. And so it would take forever to load on a phone or on a website. And so we need to make images that look just as good, but that are not the same size. So we're gonna reduce the size and then we're gonna reduce it even further using lossless compression, which I'll show you how to do right now. Here we are, we have a Adobe Illustrator open. We're not gonna use Photoshop for this step. And uh, we're basically gonna put it the uh, image into Photoshop or Illustrator, and then we're going to save it. So we're just gonna go through these and we're gonna open with Adobe Illustrator, just like this. We're gonna take the image, go a thousand by a thousand. Lock those by default. And so now we have this nice, beautiful image. We're gonna go export, save for web. We're gonna high quality JPEG, thousand by a thousand, and we're gonna save it in product shots, JPEG images, boom. 
And that's how we're gonna do it. And we're just gonna go down the line, opening these up in Illustrator and compressing file sizes. The way the files are right now is they're just too large to work with still. They're like 4,000 pixels wide. And so we need to reduce that down to 1,000 by 1,000 pixels. And that's what I'm doing here. Once they're a smaller size, then we can upload them to TinyPNG and make them tiny so they load fast. So this is how we are going to compress uh, photos for the web. So let's open up our folder, see what we got. What are we working with? All right, so we're going to use these JPEGs, which are approximately 44 kilobytes. We're going to compress all these mofos. So we get some really tiny files. Look at that, compressing it by half. Oh, I love tiny file sizes. So it went through a lot of stages. We went from raw product shots, like all of these, all the way to our compressed final images, the ones we're going to be able to use for the website. And if you ask me, they look pretty dang good. So that's how you make images tiny. That's how you edit them. And that's how you get them ready and prepped for your website. I hope you learned something. Let's move on because we need to build this website and get this product launched. Mm -hmm.